Um, so take a good look at this. Um, this doesn't happen every night. Um, and, it, uh, and it doesn't happen everywhere. But it's happening here. Uh, because as I started this conversation with all of you, the LA Philharmonic is a family. And that is um, something that is represented by these three gentlemen on stage. If I may, Maestro, your first, or your first uh, uh, performance with this orchestra was in 1962, 57 years ago. Oh. 61. I was, I was a guest conductor. Oh, OK. All right. I stand corrected. Um, Esapeka, yours was in 1984, 35 years ago. Oh, yes. And, uh, <laughs> And Gustavo's was in uh, 2005, 14 years ago. That's something like 103 years of collective history conducting the Los Angeles Philharmonic. So I'd love for you to think about a moment, an experience, a concert during your time with this orchestra that somehow either was that moment when you knew that it was going to be a long relationship or somehow came to define in some way your music directorship with this orchestra? Well, I was as young as my colleagues here when I started with the orchestra. And my first two weeks were guest conducting and I don't know about you, colleagues, but everything I conducted then was for the first time in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and that included Petrushka, the Weyburn pieces, six pieces, Don Quixote. I mean, it's just, they are not easy works. And the orchestra so supported me, because I told them, I said, look, I'm doing all this for the first time. My door is open come and give me any advice you want. Well, there was a queue outside my door. <laughs> because don't forget, we had musicians in those days that played under Bruno Walter, Stravinsky, and Klemperer above all. Klemperer had huge success with this orchestra, with contemporary music, bringing in uh, the greatest artists of the world. Some of them lived here, like Heifetz and Rubinstein, etc. But he did so much for this orchestra. And so the musicians, mostly the, the, the leading musicians, they had incredible experience with these great conductors. And uh, I had the fortune of going to recording sessions with Stravinsky, with Bruno Walter those days. So I just sat there and learned whatever I could. So I have a lot to be grateful for to this orchestra, a lot. Thank you. Esapeka, it's your turn. You're up. There are two moments. Um, the first one was when I conducted here for the first time. Um, and it actually happened to be the Ludoswowski Third Symphony. So the very first downbeat here ever in 1984 was Ludoswowski. And now tonight, Ludoswowski Four. So, it, so for me, it was like a full circle in a way. Um, and it was my first time not only with an American orchestra, but also in this country altogether. Um, and I stayed at the Biltmore and. Um, and I went to the health club for the first time, like a gym. There were no gyms in Finland. Uh, um, and that was a, a very interesting experience. Uh, anyway, <laughs> but I, I won't d d dwell on that. But then, then the rehearsal. The, uh, exactly as you said, the, the kind of support I felt and the curiosity, openness, warmth, flexibility, support. It, it was just astonishing. Um, and after the first day, I, I had this feeling that this group of musicians is going to be a big part of my life forever. Um, and uh, that feeling hasn't changed. And the second moment um, was when 
I was sitting in in the Walt Disney Concert Hall, and Gustavo was conducting the his first concert in the subscription series, um, and I could see the the connection with him and the orchestra, and and the natural uh, way things just organically fell in place. So I thought, okay, this is the way to leave because I know that everything is going to be great. It's amazing. It's down to you. <laughs> I want to cry. <laughs> um, it's a privilege to be, I'm a, I'm a result of all of this experience. If I if I if I think objectively, um, because I'm here between two of my heroes, conducting heroes, and it's a privilege. The same the same thing, you know. I arrived here as a almost as a teenager, as we did, you know, uh, to have only one rehearsal. And go to going to the concert, and immediately was a connection. And, and I think it's about generosity. I think this is a very generous or orchestra. If if we think what they are doing these days, if we count the amount of notes, the amount of feelings that they are living right now, they play today with. The three of us, tomorrow they play Mahler second, then they play Sibelius and Zapeka uh, the compositions, and then Beethoven nine and all of that. We see the generosity and the openness of the heart that they have. So I think this is all coming from the very beginning, you know, and it's, it's a result of a love, you know, that Maestro Meta half with the orchestra, seven, 16 years, no? 16 years together with the orchestra. Esapeca, 17. I was in a competition and he, he was a jury and he came and he talked to me and I didn't understood any word. <laughs> the only word that I understood, understood at that time was Los Angeles. <laughs> then, then I received a call and I was invited here. <laughs> the same happened to me a few months later with Maestro Meta. Maestro Meta was in Venezuela before he conducted the Simon Bolivar uh, Orchestra and for us was like a moment. And I received a call from Israel. You know, Maestro Meta, uh, you know, is uh, canceling this concert, but he wants for you to conduct this. And it was Mahler V, I remember. That was a big- Because I saw a tape of you conducting it. Yeah, and, and, and it was, so, I'm a result of the generosity of this man and this man's here and this wonderful orchestra and this wonderful community. So, if I say which moments have been, is this because this relate to Los Angeles Philharmonic directly. I was in Bamberg in a competition that he named me Los Angeles. Maestro Meta is part of this community, Los Angeles. So, that are my moments, you know. I, I, I don't. <laughs> The rest is history. <laughs> I think we're all very aware of the Los Angeles part of the Los Angeles Philharmonic, and I'm, and I'm, I'm fascinated that uh, that you all came from very different places uh, to this city, and certainly you have changed this city uh, through your music making. But I'm kind of curious, could you kind of identify a way the city has changed you uh, in the time that you have been here? Well, you know, when I first came here, I heard nothing else but from all of you or your predecessors that this was a cultural desert. That's all I heard about all the time. But there was no music center. There were, we used to play in the Baptist church downtown opposite your hotel. <laughs> uh, but there was great music being done there, you know. Yeah, exactly. Gustavo? 
I feel like an Angelino. So, uh, <laughs> mm. uh, I, I think this city has this unique magic. So, especially for us, you know, um, you know, we're coming from different country, countries from different cultures. And the, I, I, I feel the first impression is like you don't like or you don't understand the city. But then when you get into the soul, the real soul of the city, the soul of the city is the people, then you feel so connected. And this is the thing with Los Angeles. It takes time, you know, sometimes for us to connect, but then you see the most amazing world here. And now I feel, you know, a very, very ultra, muy, muy Angelino. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. And, and, and this is about the music. This is about um, the, the, the commitment of all of you, you know, that support art, that support the culture, that made this city an example for the world, you know, because this is, this is a reality. This is an example of how we have to work, how we connect the education, the educational programs, the programming of the orchestra, the ambition, you know, uh, to, to embrace the community, you know, through the arts is amazing. So we are, we are, we are in a, an amazing and beautiful position. Esapeka, you're on cleanup. <laughs> okay, so, I was a very uptight, modernist, Finnish guy. Um, and all of a sudden I find myself in the most chill place in the world. And I had this like European canon, very sort of, okay, it's bullies and it's, you know, this and that. And people were like, yeah, fine, but what does that do to me? How would I feel? And I was like, feel? what? What are you talking about? This is intellectual. And, I, um, and that was the big lesson I learned from you people. And you. <laughs> so it's like, okay. It's, it's really about communication. It really is about how we feel and what happens when this wondrous thing called music hits the interface, which is us and not what happens before. That's actually of no interest, but it's the moment when it receives, it, 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 it's been received by us and what then happens and all that. And it feels kind of silly I'm sitting here to tell you that I figured out that music is an emotional thing, <laughs> um, on, but it was here because after that point I thought it, it's all kind of manageable. It, it's just maths, you know, on a very, very high level. Um, so wrong, so wrong. So thank you. <laughs> well, um, I'm going to wrap things up and say thank you to all of you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, maestros, for sharing your stories tonight.